Where do I put that can? Oh, there it is. Fantastic. It's always great to have plenty of yellow out, especially with the amount of sunlight that I paint. I get a number of questions about color mixing and use of color. So I thought I'd invite you into the studio and show you a few tricks. One of the most important parts is to put plenty of paint out. So we have my titanium white, French ultra blue, the alizarin, cad yellow, yellow ochre, cad orange, cad red, phthalo green, and the light red ochre, which is very similar to uh, terra rosa. And I have added a new one, which is the uh, sky blue, I like to think of it as. It's a really just a 50-50 of the ultramarine blue and my white. So I love a glass palette, lots of clean uh, painting room. I'll have my uh, trusty old palette knife for keeping this clean. I actually don't use it that much anymore uh, in my painting day. It's more about uh, using it as a cleaning device. I also love to have some tissues handy. So if I'm starting to get a little messy, nothing like a tissue or a really porous uh, little uh, bit of material or something. And the tissues are great. So I do really love those. I've got plenty of odorless medium out which is my go-to, my favorite. I've been using it uh, pretty close to 32 years now, and I can highly recommend. I think it's one of the, the top mediums uh, on the market these days. It is just marvelous. And so let's get stuck into a little bit of paint mixing. So I've just got a trusty little brush here. So what I'm doing is when we're looking at a painting, see if we look at this color here, that's actually representing up in there. So. What I like to sort of think in terms of, a lot of people will do color charts, so they'll do the pure yellow and, and drop it down by adding a little bit of white or uh, mixing your own oranges. And I think that is an excellent uh, approach. I've actually never done it. I've always found this to be a far more important, successful, and a little more interesting of an idea. So let's say that's the color that we're needing. So I used to do these with little color chips. You can go into a paint company so let's grab a little bit of blue. Not bad idea. And the great thing is with oil paint or painting in general is that there's normally three or four different ways to get to a particular value. And always try and remember that the hard work should happen on the palette. Even though it is tricky to know where and when and what to put, but if we haven't done the work to mix the color in the beginning, Unfortunately, this isn't a magic wand. It is just a brush. So let's just see how we go for this one here. So I would say, you know what, that's a little too on the blue side. But with this exercise, it's not really about getting it absolutely perfect. What it's actually about is knowing our local color or mother color and knowing which of the mixes, which of the paints is the best way, fastest way uh, the most successful way to get that particular mix. And I think this starts us to thinking more about our tonal value, ultimately not the color. I think the number one, the absolute number one problem when people are thinking color mixing, they're thinking, okay, I need to mix that color. And if you ask me, it's like lyrics and the music to a song. They, uh, or sorry, the words to a song. The words sound like it's the correct uh, phrase to use. But in music, they use the word lyrics because they're, we're tying those words together lyrically. So it is a subtle little change that I do like to think in terms of. So I'm thinking in terms of tone. How am I going to represent that tone for creating depth and distance? So there I just put a little bit more yellow in. So it is a fraction closer. And the ultimate one is going right on there and that's a little dark, but it's in the right family color. So I'm thinking, is it a warm, cold, dark? Uh, so I'm thinking lights and darks first, then I'm going for cool or warm. And if I want to cool something, I'll just throw a little bit of blue in that will knock the temperature out. It kind of cancels out yellow and red. So I think, and if you do this once a week, uh, sometimes you might be a little cold when you're starting your painting day I'd highly recommend just starting off with this. It's getting us thinking about uh, what our pigments are, uh, can do and will do for us. And it's just a good little warm up exercise. I would do this once a, a week for a whole year. And I think by the end of that, you should then know, okay, you know what? My 
uh, alizarin, that is a cool red, that's going to be used mostly in the distance. Uh, the cadmium red is looks bright, looks warm, it's not the warmest of all. My terra rosa slash light red ochre technically is the warmest. So it gets us thinking uh, how to mix and how to get depth, because I think most people go for detail. This is a fairly detailed scene, but without depth, all the detail in the world is quite mute. So with that, we've done our painting. Painting day's finished. Quite happy, sometimes really happy. Oh, and the other thing that I would really love to say is I never use uh, the paper towels. I love cotton rags. They last a lot longer than a single uh, paper towel about a 16 by 12, say a little bigger than this, or this size is an ideal size, not too big, not too small, so you're dragging it everywhere and you're not getting hands too dirty. So let's go for my favorite old fashioned trick. I've got phthalo green, so let me get some of that out. And because it is so dramatic, I'll grab a little bit of my medium and see that's then flushing that last little bit out. If I went for turpentine or if I went for a solvent, I'd find that I'm actually washing away the DNA of my painting. So I prefer to use this method. I'll then wipe that down. And let's say I want to go for a, a really clean uh, white or yellow, and you can also use the paint to actually get that paint mix. And I would actually challenge anyone, see if you can do it faster than I can. Of course, I'm taking an abbreviated uh, route there to, to get the actual nice clean paint brush but see how fast, how easy that is. And if I want a really dark dark, that's considered dirty to me, even though it's super, super clean, but we just reverse the idea, a little bit of medium. And if I'm wanting to go for say a dark uh, bluey purple, and I find this works out beautifully. See, that's a lovely bluey purple, but it may not be dark enough. So that's half the way there. And then I'll just grab a little more and bang them right on song. I think I've probably done over a million color mixes so normally with all those color mixes, there's a brush cleaning. So I think for me, this has proved to be a marvelous way to work, fast, efficient. I'm not bringing in a third party uh, solvent or turpentine that one can pollute your working area, especially if you're in the studio. Um, so that we've got that done. We've got our paint, we've got our painting mixing going. And the final one is to grab the odorless solvent, uh, turpenoid, and the Gamsol is very, very similar. I do notice that the one of the uh, Gamsol or Terpenoids doesn't decant as quickly as my odorless solvent. This is uh, made for my paints, so that's why it's uh, ideal for it. So what I'll do is just pour a little bit in, normally about a third, and a lot of times I'll have some big brushes. I'll have four or five brushes, so I'm starting off with a small one with, say, that half full, three quarter full, and then I'm cleaning that, but, but I think the secret is, is is tapping down. I'll do it three times, starting off with my smallest brush and finishing with my big brush. And to me, that's a great way to keep my brushes. And when you think that one's probably only about uh, two or three weeks old, but it's holding its shape, they will always stay uh, stain. And that's just part of how brushes go, but it's keeping a lovely square shape. And I never ever wash my hog hair or any of my brushes in soap and water. What it does, it twists the hair like that. I nickname it crazy hair. And then it also flays out like that and it goes floppy. I want a brush that has that lovely, almost flick back to really sort of grab and be able to, uh, when we need that uh, ability to really sort of get a spark out of a, say a foreground, a bit of grass, I really do want and need that nice taut bristles. So hopefully this has been of some use, a lot of use. Uh, it is my go-to, my only way that I really love to work. Uh, you may have some better ideas um, and I think that's fantastic, but this works beautifully for me. All the best, bye for now.